Go high level forms are a powerful tool, but customizing them to look cool is a little bit difficult. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to customize a go high level form using custom CSS in the form editor. And so if you look at my screen, uh, I'm on my agency website, which I actually just started using go high level. So I just set up this landing page and uh, here I've got um, one form with a background image and I also added an animation to the button and then I've got a different form down at the bottom and I added the same animation that I used on the button to this entire form and that looks pretty cool and uh, so you can easily add animations to buttons and some other elements in go high level uh, like that that's just a, a point and click thing in the builder but if you want to add a background image to a form or add an animation to a form or really customize the forms to look interesting um, and like non-generic then you need to be use a little bit of custom CSS and I know it can look intimidating but it's not that bad so hopefully I'm gonna break it down for you in this video so that you can learn how to use custom CSS on go high level because there's actually quite a few places that you can use custom CSS on go high level uh, and this is the first one that I started to play around with. So I'll go back to my Go High Level Agency account. I'm going to open the Marketing tab, which is already open. <laughs> and I'm just going to middle mouse click on the Form Builder to op that, open that in a new tab. And this will load in. And I'll open up one of my forms. So if you don't have a form yet, of course, you probably already know this. You go to create a new form and it'll create a form for you. And this is the uh, top form. And I'm going to use this one because it has the background image and it has the animation in it. And all of that is just a little bit of code. Uh, I mean, it's quite a bit of code. It's, it's all this code right here. But uh, it's again, it's not quite as hard as it looks. So the first thing we're going to do is the background image unless you feel like actually learning and memorizing all the custom CSS, which is extremely difficult, um, I recommend that you just Google it. So if you do a Google search for uh, background image custom CSS or something like that, then what you'll likely find is this website called w3schools.com. You can also just go to w3schools.com if you want and then search on the sidebar here for background image. And that's what I found, but I, I always use Google because it's a little bit faster for me. And um, so this will give you the code and all that you need. But the thing is with custom CSS, um, usually when you're using it, you're, uh, you're using it to build a web page. So you need to select the element that you want it to target. But uh, with when you're applying custom CSS to the entire form, uh, you don't need to do that. So uh, this is the selector right here. This is like, so I don't need this part and I don't need these curly brackets. All I need for the back to apply the background image to the entire form is this part right here. It's just background image colon and then um, URL bracket. And then you put the URL inside of quotation marks, close the brackets and add a semicolon. So obviously that is quite a bit of information. That's why I said it's you know not something that you want to try and memorize. Uh, it's, at least it's not something that I want to try and memorize. So whenever I need something like this, I tend to just Google it. And uh, so basically you can copy that and then uh, go over here and paste it right down here in the custom CSS of go high of your go high level form. And as you can see, I've got it right here: background image colon URL bracket, and then uh, I'll go back to my agency account and I'm going to close the marketing tab and go to the funnels and websites tab and I just have a funnel. So I'm going to open that with my middle mouse button in a new tab as well. And the way that you get uh, your image URL in case you're not aware is you just open up any page of your funnel or website and then you click on any piece of media like an image. And then you go to the uh, image library here or the media library. And then you click on the image that you want. 
So like if I wanted my, um, well, this is the image that I'm using right here. So you just click on copy, which is that symbol, and it copies the link. And then I'll just uh, go here, go back. And then you can come in here and add the link like I've done right here. You can see this is, uh, this is a go high level storage link. So that is how you add a background image to a form on go high level. And as you can see uh, on my website, I've got a pretty cool background image there, but I've also got this pulsing um, effect on this button. And I've got the same effect down here on this form. This is gonna be a little bit more difficult, but basically you do the exact same thing. Now, if you're not sure uh, what kind of custom CSS you want to add to your form or to another element, then you can Google something like uh, custom CSS animations or custom CSS transitions or cool custom CSS effects, and you'll find lots of good articles. And then once you know, once you see an example that you like and you see what it's called, then just Google how to, uh, how to create or how to do something like that and then the name of the animation. And so the animation that I'm using here is called a uh, I think it's a pulse. And the page that I found that teaches how to do it is this guy, uh, Florin Pops website. It's a pretty sweet website. Although he's got a broken image here, I'm gonna message him about that and hopefully he'll get it fixed. And um, anyways, so he's got a really nice tutorial on the CSS pulse effect, uh, C CSS animation, the pulse effect. And um, He's got a link to his code pen here, so I'll open that really quick, just so you can see it right down here. This is an example, and then all the code is here, but I find it just easier to work on his blog post. Now, I know this looks uh, intimidating if you're not into code, but basically you just need to know what you need, and then it's easy to get. So you don't need uh, this part. This is determining what the object that Florin Pop is anim animating looks like uh, initially, so we don't need that at all. And then this is basically where it starts. So what I would do is I, I need this because this is uh, kind of the initial before the transformation. And then this is uh, controlling the transformation. So I would just highlight all this and hit control C and copy it and then come back here and paste that inside here. Like I did, you can see that's all the same code and uh, you might have to play around with the curly brackets to make sure that they're in the right places. Uh, if you have a code editor like um, Visual Studio Code or something like that, they will often show you where the code errors are to make it easier to fix them. Once that's all in there and you save the form, then it turns into this. And just to show you, I'll come back here. I'm going to select this with control A and then hit control X to cut it. And then I'm gonna save the form, come back here and refresh. And you can see this is now a, this is just a normal form that I made with uh, go high level. But then if I add my styles back to it, control V, save the form and refresh again. Now it's got the background image, it's got the pulsing effect. That is a quick look at how you can add custom CSS to uh, a form or uh, it works basically the same in any other element, uh, anything else that you can add custom CSS to and go high level. And uh, if you're wondering how you get the selector, so I'll go back here and like I was saying, um, if, if you want the code to apply to the entire form, then you just paste the code in like I did with background image. But if you want it to apply to a specific part of the form, like the button, you need to find the selector. And the way that I did that is you just come in. So I'm in Chrome. It's a little bit different in Firefox, but very similar. I'm just gonna right click anywhere and hit inspect. And then I'm gonna to go to this little arrow here, which allows me to select elements. I'm gonna click on, I'm gonna hover over the element that I want and I can click on it. And that's gonna 
highlight the relevant code in this part over in the right. And then you can see right here, it says uh, class BTN BTN dark. And it's actually easier to see if I hover over it. Uh, you can see, uh, so the name of it is button, which is in pink, and then dot BTN dot BTN hyphen dark is the selector. Now the difference between the forms and the other elements on the page is that with the other stuff on the page, you can just add selectors and classes um, in the builder. So if you want to add custom CSS to those, it's much easier. Um, but with this, you actually have to find the uh, class and I might be able to do it from here. So I'm just going to go to inspect, get my selector. And then, yeah, so I didn't even need to go to the page. I can just hover over the button and you can see it's uh, .btn .btn dark. So I'll close this. And that is exactly what I've got for my selector. And then I've got an open curly bracket, I've got all the code that I need which includes some more curly brackets. And then I've got all the closing curly brackets. And then you save the form and it comes out looking like this. And remember, if you want to uh, do something different, then just have a, a few Google searches, search something like uh, cool custom CSS effects, and then uh, work from there with how to do whatever effect you choose. All right, so again, that is how to add custom CSS to a form in Go High Level. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Um, and if there's anything uh, in particular that you want to learn how to do in Go High Level that isn't provided in an existing tutorial, uh, then feel free to leave me a comment or contact me, and I will uh, do my best to help you out. All right, take care.